live from Soho, New York City. It's Wearable Electronics with Becky Stern. With me is Mr. Lady Ada himself. Congratulations <laughs> yeah. on your recent wedding. Yeah, the Dark Lord Ada is what I think we're going with. But, or Mr. Lady <laughs> Mr. Ada. Mr. Lady Ada, yeah. I think. Yeah. Um, is here to help run the show. We're going to talk about some lovely wearable electronics. What's right. on today's show? On today's show, the code is GORDS. We'll explain <laughs> why soon. It's fall. GORDS. <laughs> All right, we have Wearable Wednesday. All the things in wearable electronics fit to wear. We'll be going over component of the week. Where I show you one of my favorite components and why it's my favorite. All right, material spotlight. I show you a material you may not have seen yet and why it's my favorite. <laughs> you got questions, Becky has answers. I answer only my favorite questions. No, that's <laughs> not true. I answer all of your questions. You can leave them in the comments below and you'll be entered to win a giveaway on a future show if your question is answered. Right, that's it. Let's get the show started. Okay. First off, you guys can get yourself some wearable electronics if you go to the Adafruit store, and we have a discount code for you because you're watching my show. That's right. The code is Gord's. It's uh, ten percent off everything in the Adafruit store that's in stock in floor and wearables. And you can get some things. So you can light up your gourds. You can light up your gourds. <laughs> We're gourd crazy here today, folks. <laughs> I've been trying to pawn off all the gourds. Yeah, what are we going to do with all these things? I, my student, I had a student yeah. who needed to, uh, everybody's getting, walking out the door with cords today. Cords for everyone. Um, starting right off, we'll just jump right in. Right? Yeah, let's Where, go to Wearable Wednesday. Wearable Wednesday. So we talk about what's going on. Um, okay. What's going on is that I'm speaking at this thing on Saturday, Engadget Expand. It's a two-day uh, tech conference fun dealy thing with lots of crazy technology happening at the Javits Center. And um, you can still register if you want to come. I'm going to be on a, p a panel talking about wearable electronics. Yeah. I have an Engadget story, if you'd like to hear it. Please, I would. Yeah. So when I was retiring out of my previous career, um, I was writing at Popular Science, and uh, I went to an event at Microsoft. And uh, Peter Rojas, who was uh, leaving Gizmodo, was thinking about starting a new site. Wasn't sure if he was going to call it Gadget something. He said, hey, do you want to write on the site? Mm -hmm. And I thought the future of publishing was online. And uh, I was doing um, how-tos uh, with popular science in the new how-to point oh section. And this is before Hackaday started. And uh, I started um, writing how-tos on a gadget. I was uh, one of the, uh, the, the first person mm -hmm. uh, writing besides Pete and then the, the how-to editor. Um, and I would write uh, a how-to Tuesday. I only, no, have a few, no. I only have a few tricks. <laughs> how to Tuesday. Wearable one Wednesday, how to yeah. Tuesday. Yeah. And we actually carried that over to make. We did how to mm -hmm. Tuesdays with Mark DeVink. Um, but uh, the, 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 the how to section became so popular, Hackaday was born. Yeah. And then um, I retired from that when I found uh, that there was even more of a maker market out there. And then make came along. And uh, we've met people, Phil B through the Hackaday, yep. he was a, a writer there. Oh, yeah, and right. then you came through Make. So it's all connected, folks. All connected. I've been on the Engadget show twice now. Yeah. yeah Once yeah, yeah. with my TV Be Gone jacket. Yeah, La uh, Lady Ada did an Engadget one. Yep. And uh, it's, it's neat. Fun. So this is their first like kind of big gadget event. Like maybe Yeah, and they're having one in New York here, and then they're going to do another one in San Francisco yeah. later. Yeah. So it should be fun. I'm excited to see LeVar Burton. Yeah. Because Jordy's my favorite. And then there's like, I don't know, there's lots of cool stuff going on. Yeah. And unlike, I think, CES, which is a consumer electronics show, that's what it stands for. But, yeah. <laughs> um, they don't want the TV be gone, apparently, uh, to show up at their event. But at uh, Gadget, uh, I believe they do. Oh. Yeah. OK. Um, you know what the <laughs> arch nemesis of the TV be gone is? For all of you who are like, oh my god, gaff tape. Yeah. Put it over the sensor yeah. on your TV, and you don't have to worry also, about it. Also, firmware updates. There's a firmware update that when you um, you can set a TV not to be controlled by a remote, and it says when you do yeah, it. Yeah, that's too high tech, <laughs> and involves like navigating through menus. I'm all about just like yeah, sticker. Anyway, so that's happening this weekend. Uh, Registration is pretty cheap if you want to go for one day or both. Um, I'll be there on Saturday. Okay, folks, see you. All right, what is this? interesting looking board, Becky. It's the Bear Conductive Touch board that's uh, in what on pre-order slash like support us on Kickstarter, but our Kickstarter is way overfunded already. Yeah. Kind of get one. Um, so we carry the Bear Conductive Ink, which is really cool, and um, this is their first uh, like foray into offering some a hardware board, right? And it's it's Arduino compatible. Um, it's actually Arduino at heart, which is like the, the way that Arduino is um, like publicly sanctioning certain um, 
you know, boards that are being made that are made within, um, you know, by the guidelines that Arduino has set forward. Or yeah, the Arduino at Heart program is kind of interesting for the for the folks out there. If you have something that uses an Arduino in a certain way, instead of it being a clone. Um, of an Arduino, you can actually contact Arduino and say, we'd like to use the Arduino name. Um, that's one of the problems. A lot of people use the Arduino name, and they shouldn't. And Arduino at heart allows you to work with the Arduino team and say, well, this is a good Arduino at heart, because it's functionality that maybe Arduino wouldn't build into a regular Arduino. Sure. So it takes Arduino and extends it. So Yeah, but you can program it with Arduino and use all that code. So it's, what it's got is like an audio out for a speaker, a, um, I think it's the 32U4, um, yeah, it's some everything's a 32 foot board now. Some capacitive yeah. pads already hooked up and an MP3 player all in one. So you, it makes it really easy to, yeah. you want to go back to this material yeah, slide. Okay. You can use wow. any conductive material um, as like a trigger or an input, or you can also make a capacitive distance sensors with the bare conductive paint. So yeah. there's a cool GIF of like um, the capacitive wow. sensing senses like the, wow. you know, this body of liquid, which is your body. Yeah. Um, According to Star Trek, ugly bags of mostly water. <laughs> you can remind you can remind yourself that um, your you have like this uh, electromagnetic interference that the capacitive touch sensor is picking up. So they have a cool video on their Kickstarter page um, yeah. that shows like using it to detect a whole person by like painting on the wall um, and using it to like turn on a light switch. So it's a really cool board. Um, you should check it out. Okay. Uh, next up, we have some new products for wearables. Ooh. Oh, yeah. I, whenever there's new wearables products and it's not component of the week, I want to show it to you. So this is like the Goldilocks battery. It's not yeah. too big, and it's not too small, and it's 500 milliamps. And yeah. It'll still eat all your porridge, though. Yes. Yeah. Yes, it will eat all of your porridge. Um, but it's bigger, it's bigger than our smallest battery, and it's smaller than the medium-sized battery. So Goldilocks battery. Get it. All right. Next up. Goggles. I know yeah. you all wanted to make goggles projects, and you didn't know where to get the goggles to put your NeoPixel rings in, but you get them from us. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, this, this is, is probably, probably the most well-known Halloween, Halloween project this year. This, year. Um, this uses our LED um, um, NeoPixels, and uh, we, didn't we didn't have goggles, goggles in time for um, Halloween, which is the way it always works out, but we have plenty for next Halloween. Yeah, we're so get set. Started they'll now. be popular next Halloween, too. This is Phil B's uh, Kaleidoscope Eyes goggles yeah. project. They'll see uses the same code for our uh, Gemma hoop earrings. Yeah. And it's a really fun, easy project to do, and like with a major payoff. We've been seeing lots of people make really fun goggles and modding our code and all that stuff. So get yourself some goggles. The NeoPixel rings fit in them perfectly. Yeah. Um, next up, this is from the LED artist, uh, the LEDart.com. And he's a New York City-based artist that makes um, these really beautiful boards. Um, this is the RGB one we have. Uh, a white LED one that, that, that runs uh, the uh, LEDs runs around, and then we have um, a charger and a little tiny um, coin cell uh, rechargeable, which are very hard to find. So we sold out uh, pretty fast, but um, we'll have more in stock soon. Um, this is now the fourth or fifth. I have to check my my. Um, Your chart. <laughs> my org chart. <laughs> uh, uh, round wearable electronic board, and one of our missions. Uh, starting a couple years ago was to get more wearable electronics out, more variety, more things that you can do. And this is just another variation. This uses a pick chip. So for you people who don't want to AVR, you don't want to do Arduino stuff, guess what? You got a pick. Guess what? Pick's cool. That was my first time doing any physical computing stuff is with pick chips. Yep. So. Yeah. Parallax stuff. I grew up on the basics now. Um, and next up, it's decorative gourd season. Oh my god, is it time for this now? <laughs> yeah. I released this video and I got instantly got so embarrassed. Really? <laughs> and then I was telling people, yeah, what do you think of this? I have no idea what to think of this. You can blame me, because I think I should, hey, this is, I think you should do this. You just said, I don't know, Phil told me to do it. Like, well, and I, again, I tell people, it's, I, I had a lot of fun making you guys a special autumnal greeting video um, based off of a really popular McSweeney's article. And, um, and after I put it out, I, I didn't have regret. It's not regret. It's just, I don't know how to feel about this. So if you like this video, share it with your friends. Yeah. I don't know about you, but I can't wait to get my hands on some f gourds and arrange them in a horn-shaped basket on my dining room table. I'm going to add electronics, and that f is going to look so seasonal. I'm about to wire up that wicker f and fill it with an insanely ornate assortment of shellac vegetables. When my guests come over, it'll be like blammo. Check out my decorative glowing gourds and f Guess what season it is? It's f fall. There's a nip in the air and my house is full of mutant squash.
I might even throw some multicolored light up leaves into the mix, all haphazard like an October breeze just blew in and that up. And then I'm gonna get to making a beautiful gourd necklace for myself. People are gonna be like, aren't those gourds straining your neck? And I'm just gonna thread another gourd onto my necklace without breaking their gaze and quietly say, it's fall. You're either ready to reap this harvest or you're not. Welcome to autumn, you gorgeous Love, Adafruit. All right, so we're back. <laughs> and that, and that's that, decorative that, gourd season. Yeah, and for the folks who um, want to look on YouTube, you can see the other version without the bleeping, there's and an, you'll be pleasantly surprised. Yeah, there's an unrated version without the bleeping, and yeah, yeah. You, you will be, all of you children will be pleasantly surprised. Yeah. That's right. really fun to make, for sure. Yeah. I like LEDs, and fall really is my favorite season, so. I'm glad I got to make you guys a greeting card. I want it to be like uh, Phil B's Time Ball video yeah. from New yeah, Year yeah. 2012. Um, but you know, we'll see how they hold up our holiday cards that we make. Okay. And that's, next that is what today's code is about. Oh yeah, gourds. gourds. Yeah, oops, sorry, I'm skipping ahead. You can use the code gourds to get 10% off everything in the Adafruit store in the wearables and flora categories and make your Self, so I wish I had a. Uh, we had a bleeper on the mixer. I could tell blah, you to blah. get some yeah. bleeping gourds. Yeah, just had an echo on the show. Sorry about that. Just new camera setup and new Wirecast Five and new everything. Is We're not going to let that HDMI input be an audio source <laughs> for you anymore. Don't yeah. worry. Wirecast Five. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay, moving right along. Component of the week, Becky. What is the component this the week? The component this week is this tactile on-off switch. I, I know, it doesn't seem that exciting, but this is my favorite switch on the face of the planet, I it promise is, you. This is a cool switch. I um, remember when we got these. It's a pinchy kind, so it's got wire leads that are capable of like crazy current, um, so you can use it as a power switch between your battery and your circuit, and um, it's click on, click off. And I think what they're designed for is like in the dashboard of cars, and to have a little button on top of it to um, like trigger to turn on your heat or your air conditioning or whatever. Um, but they're made by Judco, and they are um, a great way to power your wearables project. We used them in um, the Brake Life Backpack project. Wait, do you mind if I click? Yeah, go for it. I'm instantly going to activate all of your expose tools and then mess everything up. Here's the... <laughs> um, uh, when, for the backpack switch, we used this um, tactile switch and covered it with Sugru. I just put like a little piece of plastic over the actual round button and then put Sugru all around it and that made it uh, waterproof because the Sugru is still flexible so I could um, still press the button through it. And then um, the Ruse brothers feel the same way about this switch as I do. They used it for their uh, skateboard project in their 3D printed enclosure and they actually made a shape, uh, the lid for the 3D printed box like so that this button snaps right into it so you can easily turn your skateboard or whatever else you're making on and off um, from yeah. outside of the enclosure. And so you can download that enclosure on Thingiverse and use this button and turn your project on and off. All right. Next up, Material Spotlight. It's the giveaway, too, and we're going to get two, two really? of those switches. I'm giving two of those switches away. Yeah, okay. Material Spotlight. OK, so materials that I like. Today we're covering a material that's not in the store. It's just a sewing thing. Mm -hmm. um, it's called interfacing and it's used for sewing. So we're doing a whole like yeah. your, cra your craft education starts now kind of a segment like oh, this we've is done good. with the thread and the... Yeah, that was great. I've actually sent links to people who ask questions about the different types of thread and then the glues. Right, the adhesives, yeah. yeah. So adhesives, we're gonna do interfacing, which is um, for those who don't know about sewing at all, interfacing is used, um, it appears in like the collar of your dress shirt or the waistband of your pants or your skirt. Um, it's used often to thicken uh, and stiffen a structured area of a garment. So collars, waistbands, plackets, things like that. And um, you can have the kind that doesn't iron on. It just like joins up with your fabric and you sew it into your collar or whatever. And then you can also get the fusible kind. And this kind um, is fusible on one side. So you can iron it to your fabric and then cut out your pattern pieces and you have kind of like this thicker, yeah. Do you want to show it over the thicker the fabric. Oh yeah, you want to look on the overhead? Yeah. You can, I wonder if you can see, um, yeah, focus, um, how, if you can see the little iron on beads. The dramatic effect. Soft focus, dramatic interfacing effect. I'm going to hmm. get you to focus today, camera. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe you want this kind. Yeah, maybe it's all the. 
I'm not well, sure. That's all right. Oh, there, wait, we go. there we go. Look, it went. So the iron on interfacing, you can sort of see there's a texture here, right? And those are the little like iron on adhesive bits. So you put it face down and you iron it on and then it's like this thicker thing. People usually use it also for like backing embroidery um, to make like uh, like a thick machine embroidery will often make a uh, puckery thing happen to your fabric. So you can put this mm -hmm. on first. And then um, the other kind that I like is this double-sided fusible interfacing. And it comes with a paper backing. And it's see how like sheer it is. And really all it is is like this web of starchy like adhesive. Oh, yeah. And so what happens is you iron it with the paper on on one side, and we have a picture from the um, plush game controller project. Right here? The first one, no, the first one. Oh, the first one. This one, yeah. So you iron it on, like with the paper side down, and then you can peel off the paper um, to reveal just the adhesive, and then you can cut out shapes. That's conductive fabric that is then used um, to make you know, capacitive touch buttons for the controller. Uh, yeah. So you can use double-sided iron-on interfacing to make like any fabric iron-on fabric, iron-on switches. Um, this is what it looks like when you buy it at the store. It comes in like a roll or a tube, or sometimes the bigger stuff comes on a fabric bolt in the fabric section at your local craft store. Um, and it comes in different weights. You can see it says for dresses and blouses, for jackets and waistbands, for buttonholes. <laughs> yeah. Um, really none of them say for, for plush electronics controllers, but you know, play not, it by ear. Not yet. <laughs> not yet, but it's coming. It is. Um, so interfacing is used to stiffen and make structure in your fabric, but can also be used to make a fusible iron-on bond for making your own electronic plush toys, and you should know about it. Oh, and you had one last photo here. What oh is, yeah, I found yeah, this what photo is, what is online this? of some, uh, somebody who's making a cross-stitch companion cube, and we have a cross-stitch kit oh. ourselves too, the Ohm Sweet Ohm kit, so you can use fusible interfacing to iron on the back of your cross-stitch okay. to make like a more structured plush well, cube. Yeah. They didn't want our cube to be floppy, so you put yeah. interfacing on the back, and it also like can seal in all the ends of your embroidery. Okay. It's what it's for. Get some and use it. This is cool stuff. Before we get on the question and answer, the code is gourds. Now you know why. Because it's, it's decorative gourds. Because it's Evan <laughs> Fall, <laughs> mothers and fathers. <laughs> If you, if you, yeah, hey, gourds. <laughs> Today. Neopixels and gourds. It's just, it's what yeah. my life is like right now. Come over to my desk, it's just gourds and LEDs. Yeah, I like the um, the leaf shaped EL panel. Yeah, those they, came that, out really those are nice. Beautiful. Um, and what we did is we used like an orange gel and put the, we have all this like pink EL panel yeah. and we put yeah, it behind yeah. the orange gel and we took some white EL panel and actually shined it away from, like down yeah. against the desk and then the orange gel kind oh, of like makes again. a silhouette of light. Yeah, it's really neat. And, and when you mix it with the real fake ma fake maple leaves, like in the lower left of this picture, you can see that like it diffused through the fake maple leaves we had. Yeah. It's actually a really fun effect. The thing to notice about cutting EL panel though is that it makes the edges electrocute you. So um, it's a tablescape, well, it's like a, not for touching. It's like a little, it's like a little friend, like a little bzz bzz. Yeah, <laughs> it's like it does. You don't really notice it's hurting you until unless yeah. you really hold on to it for a long time. Yeah. Maybe. Otherwise, it just feels like the edge might be sharp or something. Yeah. The closest thing I can think of, you know, when your like hand or arm falls asleep, like little pins and needles, a little bit. A little bit. Like it's it. not even that bad. It's just like yeah. it feels maybe hot and sharp. Yeah. <laughs> but you don't touch all, it when it's in the corner. All my best friends are hot and sharp. Hot and sharp. Yeah. Okay, so it's question and answer time. You have questions, Becky has answers. If you have questions for a future show, you can leave them in the comments here. You can put them on Twitter or Facebook or Google Plus, or you can fax them to me, yeah. um, and I will put them in a future show. All you need to do is ask me you know, um, questions about wearable electronics that you think other people want to hear the answer to, and if I answer your question on the show, you will be eligible for that show's giveaway. So today's yeah. giveaway is two of our tactile on-off switches. You can have one project on, one project off, both projects on, endless possibilities. Yeah. Um, so ask your questions here or elsewhere on the internet and I'll save them for a future show. First question is, I'm looking for a thick black choker to use for a wearable project. It will need to be one inch to accommodate the electronics. Do you have any suggestions? Yes, why don't you use the collar from our punk collar LED, our punk LED collar kit. Um, it's not a very expensive kit and most of the cost of the kit goes to the collar. So if you don't mind having a few extra 10 millimeter red LEDs around, you should pick up that kit because that collar is very high quality leather. Um, it's at least one inch in diameter. It comes with a little piece of ultra suede you can use to line it if you put the electronics through it. And um, it's high quality made in the USA, so. Yeah. 
All right, and next. Uh, and also share your project with us, please, so we can see it. A question I hope you can answer. The gem and trinket, I thought they were mostly interchangeable in wearable electronics. Is there any advantage or disadvantages to either one that you can see? They are just different. They're, they're similar but different. So they both use the same chip, which means they're capable of holding the same um, size program. And uh, But Gemma is round and has big pads for sewing and has a JST yeah. connector for power. So if you don't want to solder at all, you want to make a completely like e-textiles project, yeah. uh, Gemma yeah. is for you because it's for sewing and the batteries just plug in. You don't need to solder anything to it. If you're more of a breadboard type or maybe you want to breadboard your wearables project first, yeah. uh, Trinket's breadboard friendly and uh, it, has, it also has more of the outputs of the chip exposed. So if yeah. you're making a project like the Cyber Falls wig right here, um, it uses like multiple strands of NeoPixels and takes advantage of Trinket's five outputs versus Gemma's three. Yeah, and then the other thing is just, you know, physically the Trinket is a square and, the, and Gemma's round. And for wearables, it, uh, round is better. Because it doesn't poke you. Poke. Once snag if you fall on it, <laughs> wonder right. it wonder it the pads are far apart from each other, so you can easily yeah. sew them with conductive thread. It's not very easy to sew. You know, I wouldn't recommend sewing trinket with conductive thread, but they're both fine for soldering. Uh, they both have the same chip. They both are USB. You need to use the same software. To, like so, they're very similar, but yeah. and you can you can develop on one and move to another if you yeah. are that kind of person. Okay, next up, can I encase one of your battery packs in Sugru to make it more durable and rugged? Um, you could put bumpers on the corner of your battery pack to make it more rugged out of Sugru. I, I don't know how you would open your battery pack to just change the batteries if you... I mean, you could put like a layer of Sugru on one side and a layer of Sugru on the other side, but I don't know about completely encasing a battery pack or especially not like a lithium polymer battery just because those need like airflow to stay cool. Um, and um, you want to be able to inspect your batteries. Yeah. Uh, also like... Lipos need protection from bending, and Sugru wouldn't do that because Sugru is flexible. Yeah. It's water resistant, so if you wanted to use a little bit up top at the circuitry, that might be yeah. all right. But otherwise, just use bumpers. Don't yeah. completely encase, unless you're making a switch waterproof like this guy. Yeah, I like the idea of like little bumpers on the edge. Um, but anything that expands and contracts like a battery because it gets hot and cold. Yeah. Um, stay and away from like, enclosing it. Yeah, for insulate, you don't want to insulate it to itself because it wants to have airflow. Yeah. But for st uh, cord strain relief, it's it's pretty good too. So. Yeah. Mm. Around, but not completely around, is my recommendation for you. Yeah. Okay. And next that's it. Oh, that's all for no, questions. There's more. Oh, there's one oh, more no, question. No, there's one. But wait, there's more. Oh. Okay, so we watch Wearable Electronics as a family on Wednesday nights. It's an excellent thing. Over dinner. Over oh, dinner. So sweet. My daughter, Gwen, age seven. Hey, Gwen wants to know if you have some cool ideas for using NeoPixels on a sword. She really likes the bike helmet and wants to adapt it. My daughter, Katie, age 10, wants to use Hi, NeoPixels Katie. to make a magic wand like Harry Potter meets Tron. That's cool. Yeah. She wants to create the illusion of sparkles coming out of the wand when she waves it around. What well, do you think? I'm I'm, del I'm delighted by this adorable family and their wearable electronics project goals. Yeah, um, yeah if you want to make a sword, uh, I think the NeoPixel strip is really great for that, and you can have controls on the handle and the battery pack inside the handle. Even you can have NeoPixels going up the sword, and and you could probably um, do some kind of accelerometer thing that like triggers a a long a long the sword lightsaber ish animation. Yeah, um, magic quand, as I like to call it, yeah. my quand. We learned that in some pre-Halloween episode, why I call it a quand. quand. And uh, you could put uh, like a flora neopixel at the end or a couple of them, like a cluster maybe around a little ball at the yeah. end of the magic wand. And um, you could probably adapt our sparkle skirt code with the accelerometer gyro to, um, or compass, sorry, accelerometer compass, that detects motion in any of the axes and then, and then randomly flashes the pixels yeah. different colors. So that would give you that like, effect of sparkles coming off of the end of the wand. Yeah, one other thing you can do is if you go to the Adafruit blog, we have tens of thousands of posts. Search for sword, because there's been so many sword projects. Yeah. Um, some are easy, like you take EL and do a shape, and then some use um, some RGB addressable pixels, and then some use our NeoPixels now. And we just recently posted up a project um, that's a wand, and it just has a random sparkle pattern, and it was a big walking stick, which is really cool. So there's lots of options. Um, I want to. I want to see Gwen and Katie's photos, please. Yeah. Um, uh, you know what I heard about people watching the shows now because we're doing it in HD. Yeah. Um, they use a Chromecast and they plug it into their TV because the little Chromecast does oh, HDMI yeah. out, and they watch it basically like a TV. It's kind of nice. This is a TV show. You this can watch us show. on your TV if you want. Yeah. Ooh, how novel. That is weird. 
TVs. <laughs> We're in your living room. We're on TV. Okay. Well, it's time to do a uh, giveaway, Becky. So these are all the questions. This is what are we giving away? What is it? This is the Jetco clicky clicky on off switch times two. So you get two of them. Yeah. Okay. And right. if you have asked a question today that was asked today, your answer, your question is in this spin of randomness. It even says, it even says, things on it, things. All right. And the winner, the winner is, is, oh, I know already, I'm so happy. Sandra Roberts, your lovely daughters have each one. Each kid gets a switch. <laughs> you can turn your magic wand and your sword on and off with these switches. Gwen and Katie, congratulations. Uh, you can send an email to support at adafruit.com to claim your prize, and I'll also uh, reach out to you on YouTube. Kids love switches. I'm still a kid <laughs> yeah. who loves switches. Yeah. Clicky, clicky, clicky. Uh, these, I'm proud of this part, especially because I recommended it as a yeah. product we carry. I found out about it in um, in college. A teacher told us where to get these, and, and then when I came to work at Adafruit, I was like, you know what I think we're missing is a really like robust, clicky way to turn our projects on and off with leads. Yeah. So that's what we did. Once again, if you would like um, to buy anything from the Adafruit store in our wearables and flora category, you watchers of the show get 10% off with this week code GORDS. That's right. Share our gourd, um, gourdy greeting with your friends if you want to give them an autumn time laugh. Yeah. And um, next week, I will not be here. No, next week, it's going to be uh, Lady Ada and me, the Dark Lord Ada. Wearable <laughs> electronics with Mr. and Mrs. Lady Ada. <laughs> yeah, so we're going to be doing um, s some talk about wearable electronics. You're on vacation. You yeah. Enjoy yourself. I'm going. No emails from me. Out of the country. Yeah. And um, I'll see you guys in two weeks. Yeah, and uh, we have some cool videos ahead that you guys are going to like. We have some new products coming out. Um, when you get back, we might have another Blue Fruit. Another blue fruit, Another you blue say. fruit out the door, which will be embedded inside wearables. Oh. So, yeah. I'll talk to you about that later, too. Okay. Yeah. So, we have half of our meeting on air and then the other yeah. half later. Yeah, we, we're very efficient. In fact, I want to now test this because I think I've eliminated the... Echo, echo, yeah. echo, echo. Yeah, echo. so some, some companies, <laughs> they, they do private betas. Us, we do a public beta. We're trying out a new version of our broadcasting software, yeah. Wirecast, and this fancy camera with shallow depth of field and nice? glowing white balance oh, also like. acts as an HDMI audio input, which was getting overlaid. It's an audio source. So now we'll be able to figure this out. But these guys are, are like nerds like us who like to hear about this kind of stuff. So like They love it. Yeah, Everybody great. Loves it. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Wearable Electronics with Becky Stern. Next week, we'll be wearable electronics with Mr. and Mrs. Lady Ada. <laughs> and um, I'll see you in two weeks. OK. Hi, everybody. Bye. Thank you.